So welcome everyone. We are live in our group and I've got uh, Nicola and Glynis here tonight from Northern Education and Training, but that's just one of their companies that they own and operate. Um, and today we're going to talk all about apprenticeships and uh, apprentices. And let me just turn that down. <laughs> all about the apprenticeship schemes and um, the ins and outs, how to find yourself an apprentice, how to um, enroll an apprentice, the funding, all kinds of things available. So if you have any questions, then please put them in the chat. I'm monitoring the group as well, so I can see your questions as and when they come in. So welcome, welcome Nico and Liz, how are you doing? Hi, good, thank you. Very well, thanks. You're good. Excellent. So maybe uh, we can start off with uh, how you two got into business and maybe tell us about your like the relationship between you two. I think that's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting sometimes. Um, so we are mother and daughter. Um, you started dog grooming, didn't you, back in the day in your garage? Yeah. Uh, 2012, I started dog grooming. I thought it'd be a good idea to do a couple of days a week to earn a little bit of extra money. And yeah. then it sort of expanded into nine grooming salons, which we've ended up franchising out. Um, and then we've gone on, Nikki joined me. She, you, you want, you're you a school teacher to yeah, begin with, so weren't you? I graduated as a teacher in 2011. I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, um, did that for a few years and then Come and knocked on your door to train me, didn't I? You'd had you'd had enough. You'd had enough of teaching. Yeah, and I did. I did. Lo I loved like the classroom side of it. It was all the yeah. bits and bobs that went along with it. I just didn't like it. And at least the dogs couldn't answer me back, which was always a bonus. <laughs> and I kind of did what they told. I think you'll find there's quite a few um, teachers that turn to dog grooming. There's quite a few teachers in the group at the moment uh, yeah, who have taken up really dog grooming. Have... We have quite a lot that come to us to do a yeah. training, don't, don't we? So. Yeah, and our staff as well. We have like a lot of teachers um, as well as dog groomers. So it's nice to sort of for them because they, they're still doing the, the teaching, but they're obviously working with dogs as well, which is good. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So you grew, quite, you grew quite quickly, really. If you started in 2012 grooming mm -hmm. and then nine shops or nine salons within that Just, many years. That, it's incredible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I just don't know what I was doing really. I just, just <laughs> sort of, it just steamrolled ahead and um, spiraled. And then I thought, because I, I was doing the Tallington Tea Touch as well, I decided then to open up the training academy so that I'm passionate about the handling of the dogs. So I thought, well, if we get these students right from the beginning and get the foundations correct of the handling, um, then that would be a nice way of sort of introducing tea touch into the grooming industry um so we made that myself and dawn harkin made that into an ocn accredited course and then mm. of course nicola was sort of really pushing for the apprenticeships weren't you yeah um because we were sort of struggling to well our, our, our apprentices were not liking the idea of traveling two hours to, to go to a college where they really... No, so I worked as an assessor, an animal care mm -hmm. assessor for a college in a, um, because I, I did want to get sort of back into education, but not sort of standing in, in the classroom. Um, yeah. And then I think the main reason we decided to do it was that we liked the... The colleges that our apprentices went to were brilliant and the staff are very, very knowledgeable. Um, but I think it was kind of didn't matter what sort of industry you're in, whether you're a dog room and boarding, catteries, it was all kind of um, the everyone was getting the same sort of work and we kind of wanted to be able to tailor it yeah. to dog groomers or doggy daycare and kind of give a more of a tailor made delivery for our apprentices to get as much out of the apprenticeship as they can because some of them weren't keen on going to the college when they were saying they learnt more in the workplace so yeah. to get them to go to college was becoming quite challenging and 
this is what we we ended up that they were trying to sort of jump out the apprenticeship and we didn't want to lose them as a member of staff because they did the job correctly and they were passionate of the job but they they were really sort of rebelling against going to college and saying i don't want to you know feed guinea pigs today and this type of <laughs> yeah. thing so so we just wanted to do it ourselves so that we could just tailor make it a little bit obviously there are um units in the animal care that you do have to cover but we're sort of expanding more on the grooming units and just making the the other units a bit more smaller yeah you kind of you kind of um pulled on your sort of background in teaching nicola to then start up your education and training company and was that quite difficult to set up and get it going was there loads involved or um it took us about it was about three years three years yeah. wow um lots of late nights uh well early mornings <laughs> I suppose. arguments <laughs> yes um we did lots of sort of teams meetings with each other till two o'clock in the morning didn't we and mm. um yeah it was but it was really fun as well yeah we have a laugh about it now anyway <laughs> it was quite stressful then was it it was, but it was like it was. I think because we both really wanted it, we just wanted to mm. get it right and get everything as good as we could before we sort of throw it out there to think, everybody. Yeah, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves um, to to you know get it right. And Nicola, especially with being in education, she's a stickler. Um, and I think to be honest, I I frustrate her sometimes. So nice. <laughs> no comments. Oh, no cutting corners. So you've got your pet groomers, you've got a um, pet grooming training school, um, and you've got your uh, tea touch, Tellington Tea Touch education as well. And now you've got your Northern Education and Training Company, which provides these apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. So what? Um, if we start at the basics. What is? Uh, what would you define as an apprentice? What is an apprentice? So an apprentice is sort of somebody that you have in the workplace who is um, going to learn and gain experience whilst they're being paid. They're a, they're a paid member of staff, so they'll be they're classed as an employee and they still have like the same benefits as all of the employees, um, but they get this training provided whilst they're working. Um, so because of that, obviously, they, their, their sort of minimum wage is lower than that of, you know, if we just went and got a job. Um, it's altered now as well, hasn't it? They, they are a work based now, um, whereas before they used to have to go to the college. Well, some Our, still go yeah. to college. Ours, we do ours 100% work yeah. based. So Most we, of them do, right. don't they now? Yeah, so there is a requirement that the employer does have to allow them sort of 20% of their working time to do um, specific training or do some of their work. But we, I think um, a lot of people, a lot of employers, us included at first, were really sort of daunt, found that really daunting because that's effectively a day a week, isn't it, um, that you're having to give them. But there's lots of different things that can, you can, can make slot up it in, that, can't you? that OTJ hours, so they're off the job hours, that 20% can be kind of done naturally throughout the working day. So if they're learning something new, how to cut a dog's nails or they're shadowing another member of staff while they're grooming a certain dog that all classes towards that 20 percent. so it's not a case where you have to kind of take them away and sit them no. down and make them do some work it's yeah. just any sort of new learning that they're doing or shadowing or you know just watching um other members of staff that does count as that 20 percent. so it's not as kind of daunting as what it does sound initially um, but I think that, like, in all fairness, they do deserve that yeah, sort of time. Yeah. They, they are getting cheap, they're getting cheap labour. And that's kind of what you're taking on is you are committing to train that person up as well. So whilst we will, the, whatever training provider you use, will kind of focus on all their theory stuff. And we will help and guide towards gathering that practical evidence that is kind of, where the employer's role comes into it effectively is that 
they have got to sort of help them gather. Yeah, they have a responsibility yeah. to, to make sure that the learner does get that um, sort of off the job, them off the job hours. So um, how old do these people need to be? Can they be any age or is it for young people? So it can be from 16. Um, there isn't an age sort of cap on an apprenticeship. So um, I think that's kind of um, a bit of a misconception that people have is that you have to be a school leaver. You can, um, an adult can do an apprenticeship. Um, you just don't get as much funding if they're over 20, is it 24 now? Is it or um, No, over 18. Over, over 18, the, the funding isn't as much. So um, okay. to put it simply, let's take animal care. It, it costs, £5,000 to put an apprentice through an animal care apprenticeship and that's for their training and an assessment and um, they, if they're 18 and under that is 100% funded by the ESFA and um, so some of our um, employers who might be watching they might remember yourself included Bill doing reserving the funding so that's reserving the yep. money to pay for that um, apprentice if they're over 18 you only get 95 percent so the employer has to pay the remaining five percent of um of the funding which is what like 250 pounds yeah. um, it's a small it's just it's yeah it's a small contribution isn't it so it is um, you what you, you're paying in wages yeah yeah, so um, you so that an apprentice is classed as an employee and you have a, an apprenticeship agreement with them. How long do you need to have that agreement with them for? Minimum of 12 months and a day. Yeah, um, <laughs> we normally do ours over 13 months just in case we go over. So the apprenticeship wage go, is £4.30 up to the 12 months and then after then you go on to the national minimum wage and that's regardless of their age as well so if they're 20 they still get they're still um you only sort of um what's the word i'm looking for um but you still get yeah, the minimum yeah you only sort you only have to pay that four pound there yes um irrespective of what age. age so you're only obliged that's what i was about to say you can pay them more if you want to um personal choice um and then but then after the the 12 months is up if they're still on their apprenticeship. And legally, you've got to pay them minimum wage. The correct minimum wage for their age. Yeah, yeah. So um, you hire an apprentice, do you do interviews? Do you interview your the people that you take on? You can you can run, it's like a selection process, I'm assuming. You can yeah, um, so put out an advert. As, um, so like from, if, us as employers, if we were taking on an apprentice, we'd sort of do our own interviewing and um, we do the selection process ourselves. And then before we became a training provider, we would then just kind of put them, bring up training providers and get them enrolled and set up. Um, as a training provider, we, we can interview on your behalf if you want us to. Um, but to be honest, we kind of stay away from that because mm. I think it's yeah. important that the employer does it and make sure that you know everyone's requirements are different yeah we can so. sift out um some you know the, the sort of the ones that appear more sort of in line with what you're looking for if you if, you, if the, an employer sort of really does want us to do that but most of them tend to want to do their own <coughs> interviews to be honest and I get that I would like to do mine so we um, we select our apprentice. So we went through an interview process, and we um, we took it down to three people. We had to do the interviews over Zoom, obviously because of COVID. And then we invited um, two of them into the shop just to do like a morning with us, just to make sure that, that they they were suitable and fitted in with the team. Um, so then we got an apprenticeship agreement drawn up, and we applied for funding for yourself. So our apprentice hasn't actually cost us anything because she's 17 years old so we get the full 100% funding don't we yes, and yeah. then she's gone on uh, on to minimum wage what would you say um well what does what apprenticeships does your company offer first of all okay so our main our most popular one is uh 
but goes without saying, doesn't it? It's animal care. Um, we do do like an assessor coach apprenticeship as well, which is quite a nice one that you can progress on to um, from finishing, say, like your animal care one. It's a good one to do any members of staff to do if they're responsible for sort of any staff training or if you've got a grooming school and you want somebody to come and help tutor in there, it's an um, assessor coach one. We've got a few staff on that, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have. We've put quite a few of our staff on in sort of our um, our managers of our salons are doing them ones because it helps. It's just gives them a bit of a hand on the training side of things. And, and how to um, approach the apprentices because we're leaving our managers to train the apprentices. So it's, it's, a, it's really sort of good for them to to know how to deal with the apprentice and, and train them it gives them that skill set it's all very well they know how to groom but it just gives them that little bit more information doesn't it yeah I think it helps them as well like because a lot of our salon managers have grown with us from apprentices so they've been an apprentice and they've not kind of been in a role where they've necessarily done any training or you know come from an educational background and when you have got these mm. apprentices it it just gives them that bit of understanding and, and confidence think, as yeah, well isn't it and really? I think it's really helpful for them because I do think a lot of them have a lot higher expectations of what that apprentice should and can yes. do and it kind of makes them think of them more as a learner rather than just a member of staff. Or oh, they're skibby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I completely understand. Having, having been sort of in the grooming world for 16 years and we've taken on quite a few apprentices and we've always, we've seen staff sort of say, oh, they're so slow or they're, they're like mm. not doing this yet. And it's like, well, you know, we've all got to start somewhere yeah. and it's having that understanding, isn't it? And then maybe um, understanding that people learn in different ways as well. So um, being able to tailor how you teach them as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, very much so. Um, we also do like a level five um, business management one as well, which again is another nice one um, to progress on to again. Um, we've only got a few on that at the moment haven't yeah we? it's um, we're so busy with the animal care we've not sort of concentrated blue. on that just yet <laughs> so tell, tell us about the animal care apprentice because most people watching tonight are probably and are probably owners of pet groomers and they're probably really really busy and they're looking to maybe sign on so an apprentice is a good way to start going down the employment um, route what's the um, animal care apprenticeship involve so at, well obviously um, hopefully touch wood by the end of the year we will have the dog room and apprenticeship it's not ready it's not out yet but as soon as it is we will be delivering that as well the animal care one is more um, about sort of like prep work isn't it washing yeah. drying um, look at about the welfare, it, health checking. It, is, it does depend as well on the actual employer because like I said, with, with us, we, we do fast track our apprentices. Um, if they sh if, it depends on the actual apprentice as well, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Because obviously, you, you know, there's ones that will, will really soak it up. Like we've got a 17 year old young apprentice and she, she's just grooming now. Uh, others take more time. So it's down to the individual learner, I think. And, uh, but the main thing is that they, they just, they do the prep work and they can do a bit of rough clipping. They don't have to learn to groom within that 12 months, no. do they? Um, There's no obligation no in the obligation. animal care apprenticeship to be a groomer by the end of it. It's all about the care and the welfare of the animals. So the dog groomers, we've tailored, we've fit that more around the prep work and we've we've got another sort of um root off it about um dealing with customers and yeah. um like more the sort of reception side of it as well mm -hmm. and then we give them courses on the canine first aid to do just to give them that information about um pest them you know your, your parasites and all the, the obvious things that they've got to learn we do also embed in our animal care qualification um, an OCN accredited certificate in Talents and T-Touch, which is done through an online course as well. 
um, which is kind of a bit sort of something a bit different that we do to other colleges, I think. Um, it's a bit unique to you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you're you, so we take our apprentice on and um, we sign our apprentice up to animal care. Is it level two animal level care? Two. Well, yeah. And then um, they're given like an online portal. How does how does that work? They've got structure, haven't they? Yeah. So it's um, we use one file, um, which is like an e-portfolio system, um, which is. It's a bit hard to kind of get used to it first think if you're not used to it which kind of well not to you but it's second nature to me now <laughs> it hurts my head sometimes <laughs> i'm not going to lie um, i'm getting there but it's brilliant it can be accessed anywhere by the apprentice um there is an app for it as well so they can work on their phone offline so anything that they can access it completely all offline and then when they get somewhere with wi-fi they can sync it and then it'll all update it back into mm -hmm. real time um and then the employer can have a profile on there as well so they can come on and check you know where the learner's up to if they've got any work outstanding and pop There's, comments on the reviews and whatnot yeah they? so and as well there is um we're doing a teams meeting with our employers in Seventeen, just to go through how one file how they can really maximize one file to help their apprentices because there's like um a little learning journal function on there where they can go on and so, write a witness testimony if they've seen their apprentice right. do something really good and you can link it to the criteria of the apprenticeship and help mark off their progress and help mark off some of their work for them um it, it is it is really good if we have um applied for some funding to get some laptops for people that haven't got um access to one but if they don't and or they really struggle we can give them the work paper based as well um until we're hoping to be able to get some laptops that we can mm. know now aren't we yeah. um, as soon as possible really so the apprentice gets allocated a um, an e-portfolio and they have to go into that and do modules do they write essays or answer it's, questions yeah, so or not, it's not very we we try to it. keep it as, as minimal sort of not feeling like you're writing a big assignment so hmm. there's sort of it's all broken down into short questions and answers some of it's like an on set out like an online course of multiple choice answers um, we try to make it as accessible as possible. Really. Plenty of resources. Yeah, lots of videos to watch. And PowerPoints and, and that. So, um, which I think is important. Uh, so basically, they'll, they'll have a PowerPoint and then they'll have the, the Q&As. So, so that, you know, they've got some sort of structure. They're not just left floundering to try and Google the answers because we, we have had that. We get a lot of the same work. Through. <laughs> yeah. It's normally the first two things that you can click on on Google. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they so um, they up, uh, they update their portfolio their e-portfolio and how much do, how much involvement does the employer have with the portfolio? How they much do they employ? As little or mm. as much as they like. Obviously we, we want to try and encourage employees to go on and have a look and add comments and it's a nice way because I think sometimes when I know like I've been in work with my apprentices and if you've had a bad or a busy day and you kind of forget to give them that pat on the back at the end of the day, it's a nice thing to do when you've gone home and reflect on days like, oh, do you know what? They've done, they dealt really well with that difficult dog and it's somewhere nice where you can go on and put a nice comment and give them some of your own positive feedback. And at the same time, it's contributing towards their apprenticeship certificate at the end. Um, so you can have sort of as little or as much as you want but we we are trying to start to encourage our yeah. employees to get more involved in it but we do also understand that they are equally it, as busy it's fast-paced dog grooming isn't it so it's really hard I, you know we've, we've all been there where you know you, you, you're up to your knees in dog hair and the last thing you want to do when you go home is then start looking on the uh, computer but i have to say it does get a bit uh, addictive when you do start looking um we've got a few employers that are sort of looking at the progress and i'll get little, little messages how are they doing and and they are really you know getting involved in it which is nice to see 
Yeah, as an employer, you're investing in a person, aren't you? You're yeah, you're much. you're you're paying for them to do their qualification with you. So it's it's good to have a vested interest. And I'm assuming you can take photos of what they've done and videos of what they've done and upload it onto it's, the portal yeah, for them. Just like video them with a customer or you know on the phone taking a booking, depending on you know how they do it. But it's it's then they can just pop it on the learning journal. But they they then. Like, so I get my staff to take videos and then I can go on and have a little look at what they're doing in the day, which is quite nice. It just depends on how that some some businesses are one to one, like they may have just the employer and the apprentices and others may not be as involved. And then they can go and see all the evidence, which is good to to, to see as you go along. Yeah. So your apprentice has got this sort of structured portfolio to go down and, and to carry to go through. But. Uh, it doesn't stop you from training them as well. It doesn't stop you from using them and using them as bathers. Train, start looking at like the male trimming and the, the prepping of the prep work. Just because they've got this structured portfolio, they can do other stuff it's within your business. Straight away, the, as, well, at mine, um, as soon as they come through the door, they are they shadow the the the, the more sort of experienced apprentice. Um, and we, we have them shadowing and then straight away, sort of maybe after a few days washing a dog and then they'll, they'll get the confidence up and maybe do a bit of nail clipping. And you want, you want them hands on. It, it's practical, isn't it, at the end of the day's mm. job. So as much as we have got this portfolio where it is very structured, the main thing of dog grooming is practical. So that's a very important part of the job. So I've spoken to a few people, um, especially the people that are one-to-one uh, or single groomers, and they're a bit concerned, like, how do they get the time to then teach someone else? You know, they've got really busy um, pet groomers, and now they've got to take the time to, to teach someone else. But I've kind of said, like, like you said, well, get your apprentice to watch you first and watch you washing your dog and talk them through it. And then it's kind of like, watch one, do one, sort of watch how, one. How can they have the time not to have an apprentice? Is what I'm well, thinking. this is it. <laughs> I just yeah. can't imagine ever working on my own without an apprentice. I did it for about six months. It nearly killed me. Um, and there's, there's no question about it. These youngsters, they, they're like sponges. They pick up very, very quickly. Um, if you get a really passionate youngster, they, they want to learn and it's it's not rocket science to wash a dog is it let's be honest I mean okay we want to do it properly but we're not asking yeah. them to do a, a massive big degree here we just want them to wash a dog and get it clean um, and you, you make more money for the sake of 30 odd quid a day you you know you will make more money you'll save you back if you're showing the workload it's 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 a win-win for me Definitely. So I was going to I was going to say, what are the benefits? What would you say are the benefits to a um, business to take on apprentices or an apprentice? Go on, Nikki. What would you say is the benefits? I know what my benefits are. I mean, I just wouldn't ha not have an apprentice. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it it's a cheap pair, of, extra pair of hands, really, isn't it? And I like that. It's to me, if and if someone that applies to an apprenticeship position, I think are going to be dedicated to learn as well because they want to do that mm -hmm. job um i like getting them from the beginning as yeah. well because you can mold them i mean 80 percent of my staff are apprent from being an apprentice um i've had amy who has been with me for 10 years she started right from the beginning but she she literally emulates everything i do and it's it's just nice isn't it because they, they, they work how you want them to work. So, it, you know, it's um, it's much better. They pick up your change. style. Very yeah. much so. Mm. Yeah, they pick up your style. Yeah. yeah, I think as well, like even for your other members of staff, it helps them. And I just always find every time we get a new apprentice, everyone's so excited to have another person mm. help, help in the salon. Yeah. And I like that, it it's kind of like having fresh meat also <laughs> or almost isn't it yeah. that you can kind of get grab hold of them and show them how you want to do not saying we don't employ people that we haven't had as apprentices yeah but we all we are like very big on using talent and t-touch handling putting the welfare before the haircut and we have had groomers that have kind of come in with a different attitude mm. and I, 
just prefer to get them from the start and train them ourselves. Um, and it's not it's like cost effective as well. Very isn't cost it? effective, because, yeah. You know. I think um, I think it's quite important for people to appreciate that. Yes, you're taking someone on to do a um, structured educational course um, for a year, maybe a bit longer, but there's nothing to stop you from keeping those people on afterwards. And then you can start then looking at progressing them through the pet grooming courses as well, isn't there? So you're potentially looking for someone at the beginning when you're doing your interviewing, you're perhaps look beyond the apprenticeship and see if it's someone that you can carry on with employment because like you said, you can train them and mould them to how you work and how your your business your business's values, can't you? Well, what we do is after they've been on an apprentice, apprenticeship, if they want to, we give them the choice. They can then fast track on to doing their level three diploma, OCN, um, and, and gaining that certification. So that, that's a nice little journey that they've taken. They've done their apprenticeship and then they can go on to do the the tab that experience experience for 12 months and then um they learn really quickly at the at the end they i literally just fast track them to get them grooming and then um they, they just start making a little portfolio up doing the level three ocm mm. so, yeah. depending on what stage they're at obviously um like so we've got one now who as i said to you earlier she's she's grooming she's been she finishes in august but she's grooming four dogs a day um, but we run it slightly different because when our manager trains them. He he's just mainly he does two dogs a day and trains them, so it's a little bit of a different setup. You couldn't do that if it was one to one in the salon; it would be a lot harder. Yeah, you kind of have to tailor it to your own needs, don't you? And, you do. and what you can and can't. Do. Yeah. Mm. So as you as your uh, apprentice goes through their years apprenticeship with with the the employer, what sort of support do you offer the employer as the provider? So. We, we always say, if there's an emergency, call us. We're always at the other end of an email, but we are, we can't always respond immediately. So we're all, we always have our phones. Um, we always have a phone and we will always ring back if for whatever reason we've missed the call. Yeah. But we're just there to sort of, I mean, we end up being like friends of our employers almost, don't we? Yeah. Because they'll ring us up at the end of the day and have a vent and... Um, I mean, we are supposed to be with the college nine to five, but we have been known to be in this office in our pajamas. <laughs> um, trying not to do that, Bill, but you know, every now and again, I get a phone call off Nicola. We need to do this, that, and the other, and somebody wants this done and that. So she'll say, "Do you fancy going up and a coffee?" And you know, I'll put the G and T down and uh, get in the car and come in for a couple of hours. <laughs> well, so sort of throw out like the hiring if yeah. they need any help the <coughs> reserve and the funding just right from the start it is end-to-end -end support so can I just say though on the subject of reserving funding um it's 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 really difficult I, the feedback I'm hearing is that the employers do get confused with um who they go to to reserve the funding and then who they go to. So if I can make it clear, as mm. as the oh. uh, yeah our role as the provider is in the, with the training of your, the apprentices, okay, and supporting them. However, we don't mind helping. Uh, we'll send the links and the information out on how to create the apprenticeship account. But if you get real, if you do get problems, and some have. Um, had problems with the account, then my, my advice is to contact the apprenticeship service for the, the helpline there. You can, um, there's a web chat, there's a, a phone number, free phone, and there's also an inquiry form because we can only go so far with that account. Mm -hmm. As I say, we're, we're more than happy to say, this is the link that you go on and tell, we, we'll- This is how you do it. Yeah, we'll give them that, that advice and we'll give them the, obviously the UK PRN number, um, the, the amount that they have to reserve, et cetera, et cetera. But then um, if, if you're having difficulties with your PAYE and that sort of thing, it's either your accountant you need to contact or it is the apprenticeship service. Yeah, so the reserve and the funding for the apprenticeship is basically, if we use animal care as an example, it costs £5,000 for the training and assessment for, to put an apprentice through an animal care 
and that's funded and um, it is the employer's responsibility to reserve the funding through the portal. Now, it, they never used to have to do that. They used to, you could just ring up your college and they reserve the funding. It's quite a new thing, mm. but it's to give the employer control. So, for example, let's say um, you've got an apprentice who's been with um, a college for six months and you're really not happy. They're not making any progress. They've not been set any work. The not having reviews carried out, um, the employer can, can kind of take a bit more control of that now and stop the funding to that training provider and move them to mm. another one and reserve the funding for another training provider. So whilst it is a bit daunting to kind of set up, it is actually a really positive thing because mm. it does give the employer that control of who is providing the training for their apprentice. Um, so having having just done gone through this ourselves with yourselves, so you um, we did the, all the application forms, which were quite straightforward. Um, we did it all over, like printed them off and did them uh, on on either on the computer or hand wrote writ them. Then you sent us the link over to set up to apply for the funding. It's just like a it's just another portal login, isn't it? And mm, you right. you just go through, set yourself up as a, an apprentice. Um, Provider, is it or an apprentice? It's just an account. It's like an account, wasn't it? Account, isn't it? Yeah. I think the confusion comes for people that don't have like a PAYE system set up. Yeah. And it's getting all, and that's where, and that's kind of not our area of expertise. And that's when you do need to kind of go to your accountant or we can advise as much, you know, we will always give as much advice as we can, but that's not our sort of forte is it no because you've got to get that information from your accountant yeah i mean don't i would say no don't, don't let the fear of that put you off because it's not um not overly onerous to sort all that out no. um it's again it's another government portal where you just mm -hmm. register for paye and you set your employee up and um, you are going to be paying a wage you'll be paying your apprentice a wage so you're going to have to be speaking to an accountant or um potentially a bookkeeper if they do payroll for you but once you get all that sorted out and set up they do it all for you anyway so yeah. Yeah. again don't don't let that fear sort of prevent you from taking on an apprentice no. so i went through and i reserved the five thousand pounds funding and then um you grabbed our bank details didn't you which is always good because that means you're going to be sending us some money at some point yeah. or someone's so going to be sending us some someone money at some point some money it's not us um no, so obviously <laughs> you get a incentive payment as well. So it's been, at the moment, because it's been increased, um, well, it's split into two. So you get um, a thousand pounds incentive payment, which um, they're taking on an employer, but there's now an extra government one. So in total, if they are under 25, so mm -hmm. up to 24, you can get up to 3000 pounds. And if they're 25 and over, you can get up to £2,500. And that's paid in instalments sort of throughout the 12-month apprenticeship. And you can't um, apply for that until the 1st of June if you're... So any for, for any apprentices that have started from April onwards, that's when, um, just to make that clear, because we have been getting that asked that a lot, you can't actually... <laughs> go for the money until it's on your account but it's it's not available until to apply until the first of june yeah that is another one that doesn't that, that's kind of that's out of our hands yeah, unfortunately we can't control that but um you, you do get so in, it but. so in june i've got to go in and just say give me my money <laughs> and do we do you get the um do you get the full amount or is it dripped it's in, like, in stages. Uh, it's in stages. Yeah. So I think um, was our first payment five hundred. Yeah, five hundred after ninety days. Yeah. So you get your first five hundred pounds after ninety days. Then we got a thousand nice. pounds from the government, didn't we? Yeah. That's so a big chunk from the government, which was a nice little surprise. So, <laughs> but it's all this is all new. Don't forget because it's just happened with COVID nineteen. So um, we we sort of were going along the journey as well, weren't we? When we first um, like put our, our apprentices on and we're able to get that we didn't realize that it was going to come like that um mm. but the, the rest is just in 500 chunks 
and just to make it budget. Yeah, and just to make it clear, you know, this um, funding that the government gives you as an employee goes up and down every year. So some years they have a, a spurt of funding, don't they, where they, yeah. they give quite a lot of money towards the education sector. Um, I certainly know, you know years ago we were getting apprentices in quite regularly and then they cut the funding completely. Yeah. So we stopped taking on apprentices, but obviously now they've opened the taps again. So now is a really good time to... Yeah take advantage and take full help, use of that. It? It, it really does yeah. help. I yeah. think for this um, sort of grant and payment, we've got, it's until September. So yeah, I think it's it? until September. As far as I'm aware, I think that's available for anyone that signs up. Sort they of keep increasing seven. it though, don't they? Yeah. So we just keep watching and you never know. <laughs> might go on after, be nice. So as an as an employer that we've just taken on apprentice, the the late the, the the lady we've taken on is 17 years old, so it's not cost us anything. We've applied for the full um, for the full cost of the apprenticeship to be covered by the government, and then in June I go in and apply for that three thousand um, pounds bonus from the government, and then we just pay Natasha is her name. We just pay Natasha five pound thirty an hour and she's full time with us. And again, our accountant sorts out all the PAYE. Um, so it's it's relatively straightforward. And Natasha then logs onto your portal and, and carries out the work that's, that's set for her. Yeah, so, so you're not paying the apprenticeship wage, you're going to give her minimum wage, am I right? Four pound, four pound 30 an hour, oh, yeah. Sorry, I thought you said I five. thought you said five pound thirty. Oh well. no! <laughs> <laughs> no, um, four pound thirty. Because again, four that pounds. is, um, I suppose that is again, it's an incentive to take on people, isn't it, within your business, and it it does help small business owners to afford to take people in, to, take people on and into their business. So and as we, as we, it's in one wash and blow, yeah, a well, day. an extra dog a day, we kind of yeah, put so, it. As, don't mm. we? Yeah, so if it, if it makes them able to do an extra dog a day or get an e or an extra wash and blow in a day, then that pays for the their apprentice. But then I go further than that and say, well, okay, maybe in a few months' time, our apprentice will perhaps be doing Labradors and um, do those washes, and then we're charging sort of forty five pounds for a Labrador, mm -hmm. and we've got someone who's getting paid four pound thirty an hour to do it. So. Yeah. Yeah straight away it starts opening up those margins for you and okay. gives you that extra help and support don't they they are a very good investment so you do get a good return on your investment i think yeah. of hiring an apprentice definitely yeah. um and then and it's satisfying yeah it is i think it's nice isn't it because you're kind of getting um just sort of developing the next sort of generation of dog groomers yeah. and animal care workers and sort of bringing the industry up again I think if yeah. they get their mm. good training placement I think mm. is uh, really important and you, you're not trapped because you obviously you, you you should try and keep that apprentice on until they finish their apprenticeship but obviously if there's real concerns or gross misconduct they can obviously yeah. leave your employment yeah. just like any any employee yeah. um and at the end of the agreement then you sit down with them and decide whether you can offer them further employment or whether you say thank you very much here's your qualification that you've done with yeah. us and goodbye so and they can put it on the cv so it's, it's good for them that at least they've got something there if, even if you can't give them a job you're not in that position yet you've given them 12 months of work quality experience training. and quality training that's great um, so just going back, sorry, Bill, to um, mm. the support and employers, we do um, six weekly reviews of all the apprentices. So that's a nice sort of time and we can catch up with our employers as well and ask them how everything's going on. Obviously, we are available in between, but if, you know, it, there's no emergency and, or anything that needs to urgently be brought to our attention, the six weekly reviews are a nice time to sort of if you've got any concerns or any questions um where we can have a little catch up and um we, we do sometimes with some volunteers do our reviews a bit sooner if they need that little bit of extra support or i mean sometimes the employer might say can you come a bit sooner um and we, we can 
sort of arrange that. Um, we've got our assessors go out, don't they? Yeah, to do we've that. got some uh, really good assessors working here. Um, and we do the reviews. So at the moment, we do the, the reviews have been going on remotely, um, but we are getting back out into the workplaces now, which is really good. I think it's really nice for the apprentices and the employers to kind of see somebody and put a face to the names and things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the assessors like getting out the office, getting away from <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> do um do the apprenticeship? So when you're looking at taking on an apprentice, do, is there like a minimum educational standards that you need to look for, or can anyone sort of go forward towards the apprentice? Or do they have to have like so GCSEs? Anyone can, and... do, anyone can do an apprenticeship. So if they don't have their English and Maths GCSEs, they will have to do functional skills as well, which they do through us and we deliver to them. Um, so it's not sort of, if they don't have their GCSEs, it's not sort of a deal breaker. No. They can still come on the apprenticeship and they'll work towards getting their level two functional skills alongside doing their apprenticeship and, and um there is support for apprentices with learning difficulties well they they can get longer than the 12 months can't they with them yeah. so the they will give support for, for um anyone mm. with dyslexic or anything with dyslexia or anything like that i've never actually hired on qualifications i've always hired on sort of uh, values and attitude and skill course, that's that. what we do to be honest with you yeah um I'll just look at the my questions now. I think we've almost covered. So uh, what, one thing I was quite interested in, we've got a lot of um, groomers who are either mobile groomers or they work from home or they work in their, their sort of garages or from a shop. Does, is there like a minimum standard um, of, of like where they work from or could someone who works from their front room have an apprentice? Yeah. Would, that, would that work? Yeah, yeah. I, everyone can have an apprentice. Um, I work from the garage and had an apprentice. Yeah, you so. from your garage, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, we, it, as long as you um, can sort of commit to having yeah. an apprentice. And the main thing is give them the training and, you know, that, that they be quiet, so, so that they're washing the dogs or, you know, prepping them and that sort of thing. That's that. That's all that, that it, uh, the requirements sort of need. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it in your house or in the you know the mobile van. As long as you've got like sort of your employer's liability insurance and everything in place, then it it doesn't matter if you're a massive chain of dog groomers or you're a one man band in a converted summer house. Does it? Cool. And um, does uh, I'll keep losing my train of thought here because I'm looking at who's watching. Um, Oh, I was going to say, oh, is there a minimum number of hours that you need to take an apprentice on for? I know hours is sort of 40 hours, but... So if um, you're taking an apprenticeship on and they're going to complete their apprenticeship full time, so within 12 months, well, hopefully within 12 months, you need to provide a minimum of 30 hours. They can do it part time, but, but it will take longer. Yeah, so you can kind of then give them two years of go over two years and then they need a minimum of 16 hours. It doesn't, if um, you have an apprentice sort of full time as well and you get up to the 12 months and they're not finished, it's not the end of the world. You, they can still carry on their apprenticeship. It just obviously means the employer then does have to pay them um, the minimum wage the for higher, their age yeah. group, but they can still complete their apprenticeship if it does run over the 12 months. So we do give up cool. sort of two years to, mm -hmm. to do it, but we like we would most, encourage to get them done. I think most months. employers want them sort of boxed off within the first 12 months. And out of all the um, people you deal with, what normally happens to the apprentice at the end? Do you find most people keep them on and offer them full-time employment or is it 50-50 or? Um, I think it's, Probably 50-50, yeah. isn't it? Um, uh, all likes of our trendies, because like we, we obviously have apprentices within our company. Most of them are kept on. Yes, um, kept on the majority, yeah. haven't we? Um, but other companies, and bearing in mind, we don't just have dog groomers, we have um, 
we have doggy daycares and kennels and and um, some of them have struggled haven't they with COVID-19 unfortunately so you can put an apprentice on hold pause if you're going through difficulties which is nice to know so you're not stopping that yeah. apprenticeship but you're putting them they say to go furlough or anything like that you can put it on pause so that's worth knowing because these kennels have had it quite hard during COVID-19 to be fair a lot of businesses have actually closed haven't they yeah so they can so say um, we get hit with another lockdown we can mm. put our apprentices on pause yes. yeah. or furlough is it furlough do they get paid there or is it just they can, you know. they'll get, they can get furloughed and they can still do the work while they're furloughed. Right. But if you, if some likes of, it's mainly the doggy daycares and the kennels that will pause the apprenticeships. Um, yeah, so, but the apprentice can still work towards yeah. doing their, their anywhere, obviously, because they're not in the workplace, they can still sit yeah. at home and continue doing their yeah. um, daily work. And, you know, we'll still, we'll still very much support them with that. Um, so that's that's a good one because yeah we we did fairly a couple of hours yeah. didn't we and they but they still did the they work they still did their work and it was gave them a bit of time to sort of catch up really didn't it yeah. or not or not yeah not. End of <laughs> supervision <laughs> not requires name anyone. <laughs> <laughs> they might be watching um one thing that um uh, when we were advertising for our apprenticeship we did get quite a number of uh, applications but when we started looking at what they'd done at school or colleges we started to realize that a lot of them had done the level two animal welfare apprenticeship at a college um, so they still carried on applying, but that's a no, isn't it? They can't apply, for, they can't redo the apprenticeship. They won't fund them to put them through the apprenticeship not, again. Not the exact same You can't one. do the exact same one. So like, um, for example, we've had people that have done animal management at college, but then have come and done an animal care and welfare apprenticeship. Right. But you couldn't do the exact same one. It would have to be, you know, something slightly different so that they're learning something new. And yeah. also, um, interestingly, it used to be that you couldn't do an apprenticeship if you had a degree, but they've changed that now so that you can actually have uh, do an apprenticeship even though you've got a degree. Yeah, yeah and be, be prepared for that because when you put that application out, um, you will get all manner of people you know we had people with firsts come apply for an apprenticeship and you're you're looking at these application forms thinking do you realize that you know the level that you're going to be going down to and the pay and stuff like that and it was quite heartbreaking in a way that these yeah. people have been gone through university but maybe yeah. it's they, but they, they on, realize it's something they want on the flip side when i decided that um i wanted to come out of teaching and i was applying for these kind of positions because i did want to retrain in a different area so it, it was, I, I was just getting knocked back left, right and centre because mm. um, they say you're overqualified yeah, or just, they just didn't see me as a relevant sort of person um, so I think like we, we've had like applicants like that but then we've had a trade though aren't they which yeah. they like they can use for life yeah. um, just a piece of paper they're actually getting a trade and that's really important yeah Going back to the, uh, Laura's just asked a question. Uh, if you take on an animal care apprentice and after they've completed that, if they want to carry on training as a groomer, can they then do the dog grooming apprentice once it's available? Yeah. So could they go on to do the next apprenticeship? Yeah. Yes. And how does that work wages wise? Would they stay on the apprentice wage or do you think they'd have to be paid um, sort of minimum wage for their age by then? If it's an apprenticeship, they can have, they pay you pay your apprenticeship wage but if they've done an apprenticeship and then they're going on another one i think because it's a different apprenticeship i think that's something we'd have to double check yeah. isn't it but mm. i think because it's, it's a, a different one, apprenticeship i i think that they could stay on apprenticeship wage but should we check me, that we will double check him yeah it doesn't <laughs> seem um that ethical does it no, either it you just but we've had like people that have done an apprenticeship with one employer and then come to us and done a different apprenticeship with us and mm. they've been on apprenticeship wage twice. I don't know yeah. if it's any different if it's with the same employer or not or how mm. I'm not 100% on that, but that's something we can um, double check and get back to on so, the side. So our Natasha, she could do her animal care apprenticeship 
this year and then probably when she's finished it the dog grooming apprenticeship will be open so we could then put her yeah put her through that apprenticeship as well couldn't we yeah yeah because yeah, it will be different it is a different apprenticeship there's mm. lots of different it's just things the fine, on financials that isn't it um and as bill said it's the ethical side of it as well yeah, yeah. I think, so, yeah, because I think I'd want to, if they've been with me 12 months and, you know, being a really good member of staff and um, obviously they're then more like a high-end prepper, possibly going doing grooming. I think they deserve to have the minimum wage, if I'm honest. Yeah. Mm. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, we'll double check it. I mm. can't say, because otherwise, effectively, you could just carry on putting your yeah. staff through. But what what about apprentices <laughs> could be yeah, yeah, able to have to have a look at us. <laughs> um, <laughs> But you could just keep putting them on apprenticeships, couldn't you? So it's got yeah. to be an end somewhere. But yeah, we'll double check the um, the rules on that one. On that. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, Hannah is asking, where's best to advertise for an apprentice? We've always are uh, we just use like websites like Indeed, Indeed don't we? Mm -hmm. Or our Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. But mainly we get the best ones I find are from Indeed. Um, however, they you, you do have to be careful when you, you, you're advertising because you don't have to sponsor, but you can get caught out and it can cost you quite a bit. So just be careful when you use Indeed that you don't um, push the wrong button and end up having to pay. If you're looking for an uh, apprentice as well, we can always sort of out on our um, social media and... We are getting a little tab made onto our web page on I can, uh, like sort of live vacancies and stuff as well. So we can, yeah. if anyone does want it, any help hiring one, they can yeah, use I mean, and we'll put it out there. The government do have an apprenticeship board, I think, like a notice board that you can yeah. advertise on. We um, initially put our advert out onto Facebook. So, you know, you're reaching all of your your followers and then obviously they share it so you ask them to share it on Facebook and then that goes out um, to all of their friends and family so quite often you pick up family members that are interested in dog grooming or I asked my neighbor who was who works with young farmers and I always think you know that kind of person that's willing to be on the farm we do quite well in a, in a dog groomer so mm -hmm. he put it out on their Facebook page so it doesn't think, you don't necessarily have to pay do you to to find yeah, your friends i think as well like we have local to us like a careers sort of center who are very active on social media as well but they have a place where you can actually go and they advertise all sorts of different friendship vacancies for employers so it might be worth looking around your local yeah. area as well and seeing if there's anything yeah. like that available to you um one question we were discussing before we came on was what's the difference between an apprenticeship and so on on the kickstart scheme so i think that's quite important because the government have put out a lot of information lately about um kickstart scheme and apprenticeships and i think we need to know the sort of differences so that when we are going out looking for someone or advertising for someone we know what we're looking for and, and why i think like the the most noticeable differences are somebody on a if you're employing somebody on a Kickstarter, they have to be on universal credit. Um, you might not always get the sort of right applicant you want because obviously when you're on universal credit, your work coach makes you apply for sort of, and we've, not, you've just got to apply for jobs. And we've, we've had examples of that. Um, we really have. Yeah, of we? people who have um, been on universal credit and been told that they've got to go for, we've had people on our dog grooming courses who've been in the middle of them and they've been told that they have to go and apply for, for a job. Uh, they don't have a choice. Oh, wow. So therefore that employer is going to get somebody who maybe have been forced, who doesn't actually want that job. Um, whereas your apprentices, do, uh, they want the job. They, yeah. you know, they, they've got the commitment there and the passion there, which is really yeah. As well, like with uh, to have a kick, I mean, Kickstarter is a great way, but we've put an app out uh, an ad out, haven't we, to yeah. get some Kickstarters in? Um, but it depends, I think, especially for like smaller businesses that want a specific apprentice to, mm -hmm. or uh, extra pair of hands to be to learn how to dog room, it might not always be the best route to go down because it's only six months and it's only sort of intended for basic training, not and sort of you in depth training that you get on an apprenticeship 
and there's got to be a new role as well, like a new position. So you've got to create. So you can't give them an existing role within the company. Yeah, or if you have an existing right. member of staff that you would like to put on, you could put them on an apprenticeship, but you couldn't put them on a Kickstarter and you can't get rid of somebody to put to get somebody else in to put on a Kickstarter either. Um, as well with a Kickstarter, you can only have a person that up to the age of 24. You can't have somebody over the age of 24. And, as, and you don't get a, like, sort of, you recognise certificate at the end of it, whereas your um, apprenticeship. I think, I think a Kickstarter is more of what we've kind of, windled it down to is it's more of a like quick fix or if it's not a specific, you know also sorry to interrupt Nikki but for your cash flow it's quite difficult because you've got to pay them a minimum the minimum wage but yeah. it's an, if you don't get paid until a month it's supposed to be a month but they don't pay they pay after the month so it's a long time to be waiting for your money, which is fine if you you know you can afford it. But if you're a small establishment, the I suppose the carrot is oh well you you're getting all the wages paid for you, but when you you've actually got in, you've in got advance. to have it in advance. So and you you're waiting. It's like anything you you know they say it's a month, but all the this Kickstarter's new and there has been teething problems and they are there's there's a big uh, long waiting list to get on it and then obviously when you get on it you, you're told oh you get a 1500 pound startup to help you well there's a wait for that so it's just mm. making sure that you can maintain the cash flow because with any business that's really important to to have the funds there to pay that higher wage yeah yeah i think when i looked into it it was more to take people into your business and teach them um basic skills yeah or basic basic skills that make them employable when they leave your business. Yeah. And yeah, I think a lot of people get excited because uh, the difference, the kickstart scheme, people, you, the government will pay their wage for you. Whereas an apprentice, you have to pay the wage. But like you said, are you getting the same sort of dedication that you might do from an apprentice? And are they there for the same sort of reasons that you might do when you're recruiting an apprentice? I think like if you wanted to hire somebody to sort of stay in your company and be able to grow and develop them and train them right through, I think an apprenticeship is probably better, in my mm. opinion, um, mm. because they're, they're getting more specialised training because they're, obviously they've got the training provider as well, delivering some training. Cool. Well, we've almost well, we've gone over an hour, so uh, probably let Gosh. you get on with your with your evening. What's uh, what's your plans for the future? What's the plans for Northern Education and Training? Have you got more apprenticeships being launched or not more courses being developed? I think we're gonna we're sort of focusing, aren't we, as well about developing like our assessor apprenticeship and like our education ones and our business management ones and leadership ones um, but to be honest our animal pair has just been so popular yeah. it has completely overtook all the others yeah um, and that's where so, our passion is really yeah. with, the, with the animal care to be honest with you but we, you know Nick yours is more education as well as yeah. you whereas with me I'm quite happy with the animal care but um I don't have a choice. And we're really excited for the dog room apprenticeship, aren't we? Very much so, yeah. What uh, do you have any insights that you can share? Do you know what that's gonna sort of involve or well it's been um <clears throat> all submitted now, hasn't we it? We could tell you, but then we'd have to kill you. Exactly. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> uh, no, it's all submitted now, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's gone also through. under review. So hopefully by the end of the year it should be available. Do you think this is gonna be like proper hands-on? like clipping and scissoring and things yeah. like that yeah there will be more. Right. interesting okay and um if people want to get in touch with you we'll obviously put all your links and details in the in the comments but um you're sort of well you're all over the uk that you don't have to be in your county or near you to work with you it's all online isn't it it's all like this all over right. zoom and through we portals are looking for animal care assessors around the UK if anybody knows of anyone or 
wants to, uh, <laughs> so what's so what's the uh, criteria for an animal care assessor then? So our assessors, we like to have um, an animal related qualification. So if they were delivering the animal care apprenticeship, they might be someone that's got that apprenticeship themselves or got their level three dog grooming and some experience in training. Um, we would like your assessor's qualification and your awards and education as well, but that is something that we can also deliver. So if you've got the sort of experience there and you just, you know, we need the piece of paper, then we can deliver them qualifications yeah. as well. So we can put you through them. Yeah. It's a good one to have as well, especially if you're going to be looking to take your dog grooming business into a training business, because to deliver um, OCN qualifications, say, you have to have that um, certificate of AET certificate, don't you, to teach? Yeah, so our sat we have obviously a training academy and then we have satellite centres as well, and they they have their awards and education and their assessors as well, So and our mm. tutors do or are working towards them. So you want freelance animal care assessors? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and anywhere, anywhere in particular in the UK that you really need them? Yeah, um, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if Emma's watching this, but I'll give her another nudge because she probably needs to get in touch with you. Little kick under the table, please. <laughs> <laughs> so Kent, Kent's one of them. Anywhere else, or just um, everywhere? Just we've kind we kind of dotted around sort of <coughs> Milton King Kings King is it Milton Kings Way London Way yeah so Bristol Bristol yeah it's another one right so what's the sort of work they they're required to go into the dog groomers um, and liaise with the the employer liaise with this the the apprentice yeah and... so they'll be sort of setting work with the apprentice they'll be monitoring the progress marking the work doing the six weekly reviews kind of being on hand for the employer as well um can be home based as well so it's nice yeah you don't it's it, you know obviously we're four hours away i think from you aren't we bill or three a bit more maybe yeah um, so I, don't I don't know. About four and a half, actually, I think. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. So um, if, when um, Emma comes on board, she can uh, <laughs> work from home. Um, yeah. We can drive four and a half hours to the office every day. Um, and yeah, it's all about kind of tracking learning progress, assessing the work they're doing, setting them the work, um, liaising with employers, getting the employers involved. Um, kind of reporting back to us and where they, they have a line manager that um, will support them as well so um, that she, they'll, that the line manager will be able to help them if they're struggling with you know any of the marking or just keep tabs on them for that you know to, to give them that support and help and it's all just about kind of like generating any new resources because everyone knew that we had come in has got new ideas again haven't they yeah so, and, um, but we're lucky because there all seem to be it specialists that come and one of here. our assessors is a dog groomer but is also or was an it teacher as well so she's awesome <laughs> She's yes. like our yes. <laughs> so it also gives um, people another. Froze. Yeah, I've, I've unpaused. My, my boys are probably playing on the PlayStation or something. But um, it gives people another revenue income as well, another revenue stream, doesn't it? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll go and kick Emma in a minute and say that what, what are you doing? Get in touch. Get in touch with Nicola and. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyone that wants to uh, offer an apprenticeship yourselves you do it all online um, it can all be done within their shop or their home or their mobile van it's all done via portals um, they don't pay you anything the, the government pay for the the funding and there's a little incentive there as well for them i think that's probably that sums it up doesn't it cherry on the top yeah. So, like I said, that funding um, comes and goes. At the moment, the government are pushing the apprenticeships, but they can always pull the plug at any mm -hmm. time. So it's really important if you're going to do it, you know, now's a really good time to do it. And 
you know, I've, I've worked with you guys with our apprenticeship and it's been like really good. It's been really easy to sort out. So I definitely recommend you guys. So we'll put all your um, links in the comments. The no more questions in the comments. So I think we'll let you get on with your evening and go and Thank do some you. paperwork probably. <laughs> another coffee. Definitely another coffee. I'll have a lovely evening. Yes, I do. Take care. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye. Bye.